So hi and welcome back. Uh, hope you filled up of your drink of choice. Uh, so I am super excited to uh, introduce our next guest. Uh, so with me, I have uh, the author of uh, the Templator, uh, the, uh, main maintainer of the Templator plugin, uh, Sam Morrison. Very good to have you here. <laughs> Sounds like you've embarked on quite the journey. It it is a it is an everlasting journey. Sorry, I can't see a thing with these glasses, so I'm gonna <laughs> swap them out. Um, hey, Marcus, good to see you. Good to see you. So you're maintaining the Templator plugin, as I'm sure that a lot of people know about. Uh, how, did, how did that yeah. happen? How did it happen? Um, so for folks who don't know, Templator is this beast of a plugin that lets you essentially run code inside Obsidian to add text and do a bunch of different stuff. Um, I fell in love with Templator uh, really early when it was first released, and um, I, I write a little plugin. I wrote a little plugin. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's called Buttons. It's called the Buttons plugin. Uh, and Templator and Buttons are like uh, butter and corn on the cob. They work really, really well together. So I got really into Templator and wrote a bunch, and then just started answering questions that people had in the OMG Discord. We got our nice little templator thread, and I um, just wanted to help people out because it's it's can be very simple to do something in templator. And then the complexity level, almost like writing a plugin, your complexity level can ramp up pretty quickly. So helping people out and uh, Silent Void, uh, the Templar Prime, uh, got <laughs> very busy and could no longer sort of keep up and we were like a hundred over a hundred issues deep in the GitHub repository. <laughs> and wow. yeah, so just uh I think we're at like 80 now. So it's not it's not like I've done anytime I try and solve some, there's more show up. But um yeah, we uh I just we started chatting and they made me a maintainer and uh I was really scared. When we first, when I first got it, because it is a very big, complex plugin. But now um, I'm at the point where I'm like comfortable enough to keep the lights on, keep the room clean, and like not break it uh, for anybody. Oh, thanks, Play Comics! Yay, <laughs> it's one of my favorites too. <laughs> well, so so it's interesting because uh, you're not actually the original author of the plugin, but no. you are one of the main maintainers. Uh, which is kind of interesting. It's, you you don't actually have to you know build the plugin yourself to actually help out and contribute to one. Yeah, there's I mean there's a huge spectrum of ways you anybody can contribute to a plugin and um, keeping it going, helping other people, um, you know. And I I've got a few I got a few different ways if we want to sort of get into some of the different ways people can help with with uh, plugins in general, or do you want to like look at some stuff in Templator? And, and... Ooh, I would actually love to see something in Templator because I okay. think that maybe not everyone uh, knows about it, uh, and uh, it might be useful to see some use cases. Or, and maybe you have some, uh, some uh, nice nuggets for uh, those who are available, okay. uh, yeah. ha have tried it out, but, you know, Oh, we'll uh, give it a we'll give it a a quick. I've got a few quick examples of things you can do. So let me just share my screen here, mm -hmm. and then I think you can bring that up. Yeah. Um, so I, I figured we'd start with the most, uh, you know, what most people use Templator for when they first get started, which is to set up a daily note template. Um, there's the daily notes uh, core plugin and the templates core plugin that gets you a lot of functionality, but then there's Templator that helps extend that functionality out. So um, yeah, I was busy making button memes. Uh, <laughs> just, just so. Uh, so one thing you might want to do in your daily note is say hello to yourself. And so uh, this is this is probably the simplest Templator we'll ever get. Uh, this thing you see inside here, that's a Templator command. So it's a Alligator, I don't know what, you know, I just call them alligator brackets and a percent sign. And then here is a templater method. And uh, one fun thing about it, 
about Templator is, oops, if I can type it properly, there is an autocomplete for the commands that exist. So uh, that's a fun way to explore what's possible. And then also the the docs are actually generated from that. Auto, the autocomplete and the docs are the same. So you can go into the docs. But all this does is grab today's date. And then the argument in there is a formatting. So it's just formatting. And I'm saying hello to myself. Um, then what I see a lot of people do is they want links to their previous daily note and their next daily note. And so that this, can I zoom in? I, yeah, I can try. I don't actually know if I can make this any, any bigger. Let me try and make it even. I think you can hit uh, command plus. That works for me, I think. Yeah, I just don't know what the plus key is on my on my keyboard. Oh, okay, <laughs> yeah, like, that that's <laughs> that's complicated. <laughs> it's too complicated. Um, we'll talk about that next time. Yeah. <laughs> so hopefully, hopefully, Luke, that's that's bigger and big enough to see. Um, maybe I can even make the window a little larger, wider. Okay. So, so uh, a tip here: you can also, uh, of course, a full screen the. The, the the screencast uh, as well so because uh, you haven't <laughs> yep full screen me um, so anyway this this next little snippet gives us a link to the yesterday's and tomorrow's daily note and then finally I wanted to just get slightly more complex with this daily note and so what we're gonna do is get a random note from our vault and show that as a link on the uh, on the daily note so by the way, I've published this and the other um, demo on my blog, and I'll, I'll post the links to those uh, for folks who want to read through. So just quickly, this little magic syntax here is where you jump from your regular templator into the land of uh, like magic and fairies and elves. That little asterisk there says that this is a, actually a JavaScript templator command. And so you can now run JavaScript right in, on your notes and have it do processing stuff. The next line here, const files app.vault.get files. Well, you may go through this, Marcus, like in the in the plugin writing demo part, app is actually a way to access into Obsidian's API directly from Templator. Down here, I have the console. You're not going to be able to see, see me. Right, but if I type app into the dev console, I actually have access to the full set of Obsidian. And this is how I learned how to write anything in Templator or even in plugins. I opened the dev console and I just typed app and was like, oh, what, what's this? What's there? <laughs> it's um, a good way. So I, this just gets all the files in the vault. Then I'm doing some simple JS here to grab a random file from the array of files that are returned. And then um, the other neat thing here is anytime you cast a variable in a Templator um, command, that variable is available elsewhere in your note. So here is the final thing. Today's random note is random note. So if I just hit, um, actually, let's go back to my homepage here because uh, I created a button that uh, fires the command to create my daily note. So I'm just going to click that button and boom, there we go. That Templator script was converted into this daily note. I can navigate to yesterday's daily note, tomorrow's daily note, and my random note is Blade Runner. Now, one thing that I, I, I think is really important is, is a lot of people get stuck with this linking in that if you hit tomorrow, it doesn't actually, it just Oh, it creates a blank note based on because um, it's just it it's not triggering the daily notes script or command. So one thing you can do this is this is your Templator Pro tip is in Templator you can create what are called folder. Um, where are they? You can create folder templates here. Folder template. So I'm going to add a new folder template. This is probably like so tiny for the people watching, but all my daily notes are in the daily folder. And then I can create my daily note template in the daily folder. And do I close that? Now, when I hit tomorrow, 
because that's a note being made in my daily template folder, Templator goes, oh, I want to add the daily note template to that note, and it automatically creates it for me. You follow? That's pretty cool. Yeah. There's there's one other thing, though, is like if you do the, the logic that I put in that demo, these dates are all going to be wrong, right? Because it was set to now. So there's a, there's one other quick thing here, which is you can the daily the tp .date .now takes a couple other arguments, and so it takes a uh, a a um, it takes the format you want. It takes the offset. So if I go back here, this minus one that's an offset. So that's actually saying sorry, it's jumping around like jumping around like a jumping bean uh that's the offset so that's saying the date now one minus one day so yesterday or plus one day tomorrow but then you can also add a uh, a date for uh, a reference date so what date is actually now and because all of my daily notes are titled with a date format i can use tp.file.title to grab the title of the note mm. and then I just need to tell it this that is in this date format tp.month oops live typing that day right and so now this logic is actually not going to say what is today it's going to say what is the date defined in the title of the note and update the dates accordingly so that's how you can do uh, a, a little bit of a fancier daily note with templater very cool. I I mean, this is this is way beyond what I've done with Templar do so far. So definitely, oh, really? I yeah yeah. I'm I'm still using you know uh, the the built in one. Uh, I need to, I really need to up my game here. I feel. Well, uh, I can do. Do we want to go one level deeper? Do we have time to to go one level deeper? Uh, I I think so. I okay. uh, I think the audience would love it actually i think that we right. have some hardcore template hardcore. people in here hardcore okay maybe so maybe logging. have a like uh do you have a one really good nugget or we got so many really good n nuggets like almost too many I'll, I'll do this one quickly and then we could talk about helping to contribute oh, yeah. To, yeah. to plugins i see that um uh so this one is if i go back to that daily note there you'll notice I put a, a header called log. And something I like to do is actually create a running log with a timestamp based on things that are happening in my day. So this is the template code to, to create that log. And it, it's only slightly more complex than what we've been through so far. So again, I'm using the fancy asterisk to say, this is a awesome JavaScript template command. The first thing I need to do is grab the T file. So I don't know if you've gone through T files yet in the plugin Not tutorial. Yet. Okay. So think of a T file as every note in your vault has a T file, which is just an object that contains information about that note, where it is in the vault, what, what its name is. But in order to read and write files uh, using Obsidian, the, the sort of the Obsidian API, you need to grab the T file. You have to write based on the T file. So what this does is Templator has a built-in method called find T file that actually tries to grab the T file for a note based on the notes title. So all I'm doing here is I'm finding the T file and I'm using again date.now because my daily notes are titled based on this date format. So this will return the T file for the daily note for today. Mm. The next thing is I want to make sure I have that file. So I wrap this in an if statement, but I'm going to use tp.system.prompt to fire a, uh, a prompt modal to myself that I can write text into. And the text that is returned is, is stored in this variable logged item. So I'm doing that and I'm grabbing, I'm using tp.date.now to grab what the current time is for my timestamp. Finally, I want to read the daily note file. I want to append my logged item from the prompt to it. And then I want to modify and write back that daily note file to, to that note. So that's what's happening here. The content, my await is app.vault.read file. 
and then I'm splitting it into an array just for easy manipulation. Pointing out the await. There's an await on the prompt. There's a wait on this. That means that this code is asynchronous. Um, a lot of people get caught up on this, this isn't working. Like uh, a templator can rename files and move files, but those are all asynchronous. And if you do them without the awaits, it does it in the wrong order and everything gets borked. So right. just pay attention to what code is async or not. I'm not going to go into what that <laughs> what that means, but you can look it up in the MDN docs. All I'm doing now is I'm finding the index of that log header, and then I'm splicing in the prompted item I give. Mm. And then finally, I'm writing that back to the daily note file that I found previously. Finally, if I can't find that file, you wrote a notice in the, in the first half of this uh, talk, and you can actually trigger notices in Templator as well. You just write new notice, and you can send yourself a, hey, there was no daily note found. So now I don't have to like go into the console and be like, why is this erroring? That's, that's horrible. So in theory, I should be able to hit P, uh, Templator, um, open insert template modal, hit log, and I can go, hey, Obsidian fam, do that. And if I go back to my daily note, there it is logged under my log header. That is pretty sweet. I mean, this is way beyond what I imagined you could do with like a temp, like a something called templator, right? Oh, uh, it, this it's basically, it's like a JavaScript engine inside Obsidian that you can run on Obsidian notes. And with, so yeah, it's like, it's not just for templates. It's like any kind of, so here's, here's another one I was going to show that I didn't have time. So templator, you can actually, um, create a new note from template. I have one called IMDB and I can say, I just watched the, actually the new Hellraiser or oh, October I to, theme. Oh, I need to watch, watch that. that. Turn, so I just type that in. This is hitting the IMDB API, grabbing a list of movies called Hellraiser. Um, let's see if I can find the 20, 20 ah, I didn't, didn't return that one. So maybe my query, it asked me if I've watched it yet. I could say, no, I haven't. Oh, th through a templator error. Okay. File already exists. Oh, because I already added this one. Ah, okay. Um, <laughs> let, me, let, me do what, let me do a movie I haven't actually uh, watched. What's a movie you want to watch? Oh, uh, that's a good question. Um, oh, good question. I, I really am looking for the Wednesday series, though, on Netflix with the Adam's oh. Family. But I'm not sure if it's, uh, if it's doing a TV series. Yeah, let's just do, I think it's Adams or Adams, if it's smart enough. Adams Family. Oh, let's, let's do Adams. Yeah. Uh, okay. I think it's two T's. It's two D's. Two D's. Yeah. Adams Family. The Adams Family, 1991. Oh. Have I watched it yet? No. So then it creates this note for the Adams Family for me. Oh, that's so cool. I can also do just... Templator... Uh, open insert template modal. I can click update movie. When I've watched this movie, it's grabbing a list of any movies with the front matter of watched being no. I'm hitting this. I can give it a rating. I love this movie. I can give it a review. And I can say Wednesday is my fave. Boom. Watch changes to why. And my rating and review are appended to the note. This so, is awesome. But is, so is this like part of Templator or is this like a template that you wrote? Basically? This is all, this is a template that I wrote. So if you oh, go, okay. Um, okay. Just making sure. Yeah. But it's just like, you can, you can do any of this stuff. And in fact, like if you're thinking of a plugin you want to write or create, you could actually, uh, for a lot of it, blueprint it out as a Templator command and a templator template and then move it into the plugin syntax like once you've got the once you're like okay yeah i can do that so there's a few things that you can't do in templator that you can do in a plugin like event management and like that sort of stuff that requires sort of the life cycle of a plugin but for creating notes and hitting apis and and doing that sort of stuff templator templator is great so like if it's starting to feel to me like Templator, the name Templator is a is a very uh, 
is like an understatement. This is more like a whole workflow engine, like for automation, automating pretty much anything. Yeah. Some people, uh, <laughs> some people have said like <laughs> Templator is the worst possible name because it's not just about <laughs> templates. But the idea is that all of this, all of these are technically template notes. They live in my templates uh, folder. So this is it. Don't steal my API key, folks. Uh, but this is <laughs> this is the script that hits the IMDB API and does all that logic. So it's it's technically a template that I fire to run uh, run this JavaScript. Wow, I, I I'm definitely checking out uh, Templator. I I kind I admit now I, I have to uh, admit that I kind of brushed it aside uh, a little oh. bit because I was happy with the templates built in. And I thought that, well, I don't actually need more templates. Uh, turns out it does much more than that. So I will definitely be checking that out. Cool. Uh, and then once you've checked it out, you can start helping out on the plugin. See yes. what I did there? I just like segued us into, yeah. I like uh, I like it. I like what you did. Almost like uh, it was planned. Yeah. So, so, you know, like you said, you've been working as a, you know, a main contributor to uh, to a Templator, and you, you've seen a lot of people, uh, you know, helping out. And not all of them are contributing code, right? Absolutely. I mean, it feels kind of ironic to go from showing a bunch of code to then saying like, you can help out on a plugin without writing any code. But but you you totally can as a as a user of a plugin. There's a lot of ways that you can contribute and help help maintainers out as they try and like fix bugs or plan for improvements or do new do new versions. So I, we have a group. I called them. I've dubbed them the Templars, and they are people <laughs> that are in the Discord and on the GitHub that have just been absolutely incredible in answering people's questions, helping them troubleshoot, filing bug reports, trying to reproduce bugs that other people report. Right. Um, we get a lot of pebcac errors in Templator because it is kind of a complex, like it problem exists between chair and keyboard. Whereas yeah. it's it's not an issue with the the plugin itself. It's actually a bug within the code that the the person's written. And so having people help work through that is is really useful. Yeah, I, it's it's something I, I I'm seeing like for for bigger open source projects, uh, especially you know plugins where you know they get so popular and at some point they become so complex that contributing code is not as easy anymore. You need to kind of dive into it to understand like how to actually make yeah. changes. But at the same time, uh, bugs get harder to reproduce. Uh, if someone comes to you and, you know, at this point, uh, you know, if you've handled all the, the obvious bugs uh, maybe, and now your people are starting to hit like more, like trickier things, right? And that yeah. means that it's going to be harder for you as a maintainer to actually find out what's causing this thing. Yes. And yeah. and so f helping the maintainer to figure that out is actually a, a significant contribution to that plugin. Oh, it's it's. I think that's actually more valuable than writing writing pull like pull requests to me a pull request for those who don't know is is if you've added an improvement or tried to fix some, something on in the code you open a pull request which is meant to bring your fix into the code base the problem with the pull request is i i still need to review all the code you've written i need to make sure it does what it's uh supposed to do and i need to make sure it doesn't accidentally break something else in the code base and so like it's great i love pull requests i love like people wanting to fix problems but i think i th there's so much value in just like so i have a label on on github issues called needs repro and i put that label on any bug that is filed cuz it's like I need somebody else to go in there and tell and like reproduce this to say like this is something 
and also because obsidian is cross-platform right i was gonna say yeah it's like i have so many people filing bugs on windows i don't own a windows computer yeah (laughs) yeah, me neither and you know and it turns out that most of the i think i saw some statistics on most of the obsidian community are on windows so that's a big user group that you know i can't reproduce the bug unless i spend (laughs) the money on a rig and um, yeah so it's uh, i i think like that is, you know, I probably wouldn't be sane if I didn't have this group. Like, um, they're in the like AB nineteen oh eight. Like Luke, um, like Murph done, has done some great stuff. Ebullion, well PDX, who is in the GitHub and is amazing. Who I have no idea who any of these people are, but they're like, um, they keep me sane and and just helping, helping troubleshoot stuff, answer questions push things forward, increase understanding of what the plugin can do and and some of the the weird gotchas because it is a pretty com- complicated beast. Cool. So yeah, lots of good stuff there. And, you know, not just reprodu- uh, reproducing issues, but adding documentation, helping out support, uh, answering questions. And unfortunately, it's it's not a uh, traditionally in the open source community, uh, a lot of projects they de- tend to um, uh, prioritize code, but you know, mm. th- there's just so much you can do that is, and maintainers know this. It's just uh, yeah. not everyone contributing knows it. So thank you and so much. Yeah, like my hot take, especially for given the like nature of Obsidian October and what you're doing and showing plugins is like, my hot take is don't start by writing a plugin. Start by getting involved in an existing plugin community, either a popular one or a smaller one that needs a little love, and learn the Obsidian API through that and helping people. And like, you don't have to know a ton of JavaScript. You don't have to. I'm not a developer, by the way. Like, I I just love writing code for fun, and so um, yeah. It's... So, so I, I realize now uh, saying that um, that you know, <laughs> writing, <laughs> right, writing plugins is um, you know the first step is to actually start uh, building templates. Um, Build some templates. Yeah. Or yeah, and then like join templaters got a thread in the plugin advanced channel in the Discord. I've been petitioning for us to be our own channel, uh, kind of cheekily. But um, join join the thread. Ask ask some questions. Get involved. Start chatting. Jump over to the GitHub repo. Try to reproduce some bugs. Right. If you do have technical ability, another great thing is to like go to the open pull requests and pull them down and try to functionally test them on your computer. You don't have to read the code. You just need to know how to pull that in and build it and and you know run it in like a test vault so you don't lose your data but even that is like and then comment back yeah this works great go for it saves me so much time and having to like do all that stuff on my own awesome so we're coming up on the hour here uh so i want to uh see if we can find a few uh questions before um before we uh we say goodbye for this week uh, I just want to pick this, and not a real question, but I, I love this. That you know, it's the best way to start prototyping content for plugins. So if you're if you have yeah. an idea for a plugin, uh, start start it out as a template and and go from there. Um, yeah, I, I actually didn't know that you can add ribbon and command palette stuff from there as well. You can pretty much do anything. You can like open the console in the Dev Tools type in app, hit return, and then start digging through that because you can pretty much do anything as long as it's an exposed method in that dev console, you can do it in Templater. So mm. what's, what, what's funny is I actually started by writing a plugin and I've slowly taken all the parts of that plugin and <laughs> turned them into Templater scripts because it's, it's actually faster. It's a faster loop, right? Like 
I can go in and, and mess with my script and I don't have to rebuild. I don't have to, right. you know, spin up my ID and that sort of stuff. I could do it all in, all in Obsidian. So I have another question here. What is the future of Templator? Ah. If you can share a little, uh, get, get us excited about the future of Templator. Well, I'm what I'm really excited about is, and what I'm hoping to do as part of Obsidian October is to release Buttons 1.0. So uh, the 1.0 uh, version of but the Buttons plugin, look for it. It's going to be super. Exciting. I'm just I'm just joking, Mark. Um, <laughs> yeah, what is the future? So I, I think there's there's two things because it isn't. I didn't write it and I'm still even now getting familiar with it. My main thing is to fix some of the uh, issues that keep repeatedly coming up. Like one uh, really bad one that we tried to fix and we broke everything was if you have Obsidian open on your computer and you do it on your mobile phone, the sync is sometimes so blazingly fast that it syncs over the template commands when you open a new, create a new note from a template, and then the templater tries to run it in both places, and it causes conflict. So, stuff like that, I'm just trying to fix. Um, I'm trying to make sure that anything we add does not break anything pre-existing. It's really important that anytime I release something new with templater. It doesn't actually like I don't get a bunch of people being like, hey, you broke my workflow because a lot of a lot of folks rely on this. And then I am looking for low hanging fruit for little improvements I can I can make to the plugin that I feel confident. And I do look at pull requests and sort of review things that that people bring love PRs that are about documentation and helping improve the docs. They're some of my favorite and easiest ones to accept. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for, for joining me. Uh, it's been a pleasure having you here. Uh, we will be back next week with another uh, tutorial and a, a guest speaker interview. Um, so stay tuned. We will be posting more details on the Discord channel and you can uh, find us on Twitter as well. Um, yeah, it's been great having you here. Thank you all for your wonderful questions and comments. Um, yeah, let's continue the the conversation on on Discord. Yeah, see you, see you over there. Bye bye.